Hey everyone, this video is about the Casio FX4000P, an outstanding Casio scientific calculator that was released in 1985. And the 4000P came four years after the Verimbal FX 602P, which I have a separate video on. And the 4000P was really the next step in the evolution of Casio's advanced programmable calculators. It was the first calculator to support full arithmetic uh, expressions on a single line. And along with that came a change in programming model. Whereas the 602P supported keystroke programming, the 4000P moved to a tokenized programming language that was the beginnings of Casio Basic that is still in use today. And the 4000P also paved the way for the 7000G, the world's first graphing calculator, which was released later in 1985. And the 7000G was very similar in capability, just adding a larger display and graphing capabilities. Physically, the FX4000P is similar to many of Casio's calculators from the mid-80s. It has a metal front and back plates, and it's very light and compact. It has a 12-character 5x7 dot matrix LCD display that supports numbers and letters. And then below this is a mode reference chart. On the left side is a physical on-off switch. And on the right side is a, uh, a sc uh, scroll wheel for the uh, screen contrast. Um, the keyboard has the usual Casio springy hard plastic keys and is organized into two sections. Uh, it has a single shift key and an alpha key. And the mode key on the top right is used to switch between the various modes and settings, including the main run, write, and statistical modes. The mode key is also used to change settings such as angle units and display formats. Uh, on the back of the calculator is a reset switch uh, and also two screws that provide access to the battery compartment, uh, which we'll take out now. So I've taken off the back cover now and uh, the 4000P supports two uh, CR2032 coin cell batteries under the screw down cover. And it's possible to replace the batteries quickly in order to avoid deleting memory. Uh, inside there are also uh, seven screws uh, that can be removed to provide access to the internals. Uh, so I'll take those out now. And so the PCB is very simple and it includes a Hitachi system on a uh, chip processor. Uh, there's also a HD uh, 61914-8 um, kilobit static RAM. Uh, and it looks like there's a bunch of PCB test pads. Uh, the ribbon cable isn't supposed to be folded, so maybe someone has done some maintenance on this device at some point. Uh, the 4000P uses the same printed circuit board as the uh, Casio FC2000 financial calculator, uh, but it uses a different firmware. And you can lift out the PCB uh, to access uh, the keyboard, which is underneath. And the basic usage of the 4000P will be familiar uh, to those who have used a more modern Casio calculator. Uh, so to enter run mode, uh, you hit the mode key in 1. And uh, as I mentioned, the 4000P was the first calculator uh, to support full algebraic entry on a single line. Uh, and so you hit the EXE key uh, to evaluate the expression. Uh, you can hit the left key to go back and edit. Uh, the last uh, expression and re-evaluate. The 4000P supported a f uh, eight level stack for evaluating nested expressions and the display scrolls uh, to support uh, longer expressions. And you can use the left and right arrows to scroll back and forth. Um, the 4000P was also the first Casio calculator to support uh, alphabetic labeled variables. Uh, so to assign a value to a variable, uh, you use the right arrow key. And then once a variable is assigned, it can be used in an expression. 
And functions that take one argument uh, into prefix style and uh, functions that take two arguments are infix. Uh, so an interesting example of this is the power operation x to the y. Uh, so for example, to calculate 2 uh, to the power of 8, uh, you would enter it like so. Uh, and the 4000p supports uh, fixed uh, and uh, scientific entry. Uh, and but it doesn't support fractions, complex numbers, or matrices. Those functions did not come until the FX 4800P uh, four years later in 1989. The 4000P also has a base end mode <clears throat> that you can switch to using mode minus. Uh, and so in um, this mode you can switch between decimal, hex, uh, bin, and octal uh, using these four keys. So let's switch to decimal now uh, and uh, you will enter a number uh, and we can uh, switch to hex uh, to display a 32-bit uh, hex value. Uh, and if we switch to binary, uh, the calculator displays the least significant 8 bits uh, and there's a left arrow indicating that we can shift blocks. Uh, so we can do this using uh, the block key, uh, which is dot. Uh, so we can hit uh, dot 2 uh, to see the next 8 binary digits, and say block 4 to see uh, the 8 most significant bits. And base end mode also supports negative numbers and 2's complement. And you can mix bases in a calculation by prepending numbers by the base. Uh, and you do that by hitting the shift key uh, and then the base key. Uh, so let's say uh, shift decimal 100 uh, plus uh, shift hex uh, 10 equals. That's the binary result. Uh, and you can also do bitwise operations, not and and or. Uh, so the 4000P was quite a useful program bill, uh, programmer's calculator. And so from a programming perspective, the move away from a single number display meant the move away from keystroke programming to a tokenized programming language. And if you watch my video on the TI-86, you might remember that Texas Instruments made a similar change four years later. And the 4000P was the first Casio to support alphabetic variables. Uh, and it supports 10 program spaces. So if we select uh, right mode 2, uh, we can pick uh, the first space. Uh, and here we can use the cursor keys uh, to view the program. Uh, so this program uh, prompts for a value, uh, a time t. Uh, and it uses this time uh, to calculate uh, the distance that an object falls uh, in that number of seconds. Uh, the last statement in the program uh, prints out that distance d uh, using the triangle symbol. Uh, and so to run this program, uh, we can switch to uh, run mode 1, uh, and then we hit the program key, and then uh, it's program 0. Uh, so it's going to prompt for a time t, uh, so let's enter 10, uh, and so the object falls 490 meters. For a more complex example, we can look at the again at the solution to the N Queen's chess uh, puzzle. Now, if you've watched my video on the modern Casio FX uh, 5800P, this program is almost identical. Uh, so we can see uh, the use of uh, numeric labels, uh, and the program also uses uh, the shorthand um, ISZ and DSZ uh, commands to increment or decrement. Uh, and test for zero. And the program uses indirect addressing. Uh, for example, uh, the last lines uh, iterate uh, from uh, A1 through A9, uh, printing out uh, the solution. And on the 4000p, A1 is the same as uh, variable B, and A2 is the same as variable C. Uh, so you need to be mindful of this when uh, creating programs. And so we can switch to uh, run mode 1 again uh, to run the program. Uh, and I'll do that now. 
and I'll skip ahead to when it's finished. And so the program is finished now and on the 4000p the solution takes around 6 minutes uh, which is quite fast for a calculator from the mid 80s. Uh, the equivalent program on the HP 42S for example takes around twice that long. Uh, and it produced a solution uh, with queens on ranks 8, 4, 1, 3, 6, 2, 7 and 5. Uh, and the 4000p supports a total of 550 uh, program steps. Uh, you can hit mode dot uh, to see uh, the number of memories and uh, remaining uh, program steps. So in summary, the FX 4000p was an elegant and powerful calculator and quite revolutionary for its time. In some ways it still feels quite modern uh, since it supports the display of full arithmetic expressions and also a programming model that is essentially still in use. And after the 4000p, Casio went in a number of directions with their programmable calculators. Uh, there was a set of simpler uh, programmable such as this uh, FX 3800P uh, uh, that didn't support alphanumerics. Uh, and there was also uh, the 5000F uh, which supported a different uh, formula based programming model which I have a separate video on. Of course the graphing calculators that started uh, with the 7000G again which I have another video on. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful and if you have don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get alerted of new videos.